Bird, 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 bird! Feeling, I'm feeling spry. Hey, everybody. It's Ron Bain with the Hunting Dog Podcast. Oh, you remember how I was bitching about May and June? Oh, July is shaping up like nobody's business. The dogs are coming along. The chore list is getting smaller. My wife doesn't keep adding things to the chore list. Oh, it's just, oh, I just, the weather's been Michigan summers. You know, it's been 80, 82 during the day, 55, 60 in the morning. It just, oh, it almost feels like fall's coming on these, on these chilly Michigan mornings. Anyway, uh, you know what's coming next. My thanks to my Patreon patrons. Uh, I know they like the Zoom room. I know the other the other level HDB talk likes a little uncensored round and some of those Matt Ranella clips and episodes. But I think some of you just are philanthropic, and I can't thank you enough for being a Patreon patron. Pike Gear, I can't thank them enough for being my title sponsor. They've got some new stuff coming out, new T-shirts. They're, they're actually going to be printing off like small, like uh, what would you call it, like in the brewery business. It'd be small batch, or is that distilling? Is that the distillery? That's, I don't drink brown water to speak of. But anyway, yeah, they're going to have some small batch T-shirts coming up that they're going to have their own control. Silk screened right here in West Michigan and all different. They got a really cool one for the 4th of July. It's like the American flag, but instead of the stars and stripes, there's a grouse in it. Yeah, how do you beat that? Pike gear. Uh, how do you beat Onyx? Like, I, that's, this is like the next two days. I haven't looked at Onyx on my phone. But when somebody asked me last night around the campfire, they said, where's that place of yours in Virginia, and, and how big is it, and blah, 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 because they, they might want to rent it, like it, as any of my listeners could do, because it's now listed on all the popular weekend rental places. Uh, he got his onyx out, and I showed him, boom, right where it was. There's my name on the map. There's my piece of property. Yeah, it was, it was, it's what it was about. It's what it's, onyx can be used, like I said, in the middle of a conversation, nothing to do with hunting. It could have everything to do with just property boundaries. Oh, and I got a story for that on the next HTP talk, let me tell you. Boss Shot Shells, they're in their new building. They're having a good time. They're, um, they're, they're uh, hang on, my, 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 uh, my aux cable is not, my, I, I can't hear myself. Here, uh-oh, uh-oh, I, I'm having some prop. Oh, shit. Come on. Come on, don't do this. All right, there, 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 there. Um, they're in their new building down in Bridgman, Michigan, and uh, they are cranking out the shells for this hunting season. So don't dilly and don't dally. Order your boss shot shells. I don't believe that when you order them, you can tell them. I don't think there's a box to check off if you heard it through me or heard it through Tyler or heard it through uh, you know any of the other podcasters that work with them. But... If there is something on the order form, because obviously they give me my shells and I've never ordered them, um, make sure you let them know that if you heard it from me, give me the credit. If you heard it from Tyler, give him the credit. You heard it from, I think, uh, who was, uh, oh, what's my girlfriend's name out there? Uh, ah, anyway, anyway, wherever, let them know. Let them know that the, the podcasting advertising dollars work. I know they work. Um, Walton's told you got some really neat stuff coming up, some more cooking. We're going to be doing, uh, we're going to, my daughter's going to be going to go on their podcast as, as she's a, a, a registered dietitian and she will be, um, she, she, she might even do, she might even do a little side work for Walton's, which they'd be excited to have somebody who actually knew caloric and nutritional values for all the gun. F- Good stuff we make. But anyway, in the meantime, get their catalog. I told you last week, the catalog is, it's like food porn. It's like hunting gear. It's like its like a Cabela's and a grocery store and a professional kitchen store all wrapped up into one. 
Gunner Kennels. Well, that's just like the best kennel and the best food crate all wrapped up into one. We gave away a Gunner Kennel. Um, every quarter, we're going to be giving away a Gunner Kennel. So go to the HDP website and put your entry in. Um, I can't remember who won last week. I should know that. Let me hit pause. Maybe I can find it. Yeah. See, that, that didn't take me long. Of course, it was just a pause for you all. Uh, Dennis Bortolan. Dennis Bortolan won the Gunner Kennel, and he was actually close enough uh, to go over toward Nashville and go to the Gunner headquarters and uh, and get a nice shot of him and his German short hair, which I don't know if I could pick the line out, but I think that German short hair came from the East Coast. That's my guess. Dennis, let me know if that's true. I can't tell for sure, but I think I've seen that head before. Um, where's, the rest of my, where's the rest of my shit? I, I, I got a little grease board here. That I, how, where did I drop off? Oh, yeah, Gunner Kennels Food Crate. So every month, or every, I'm sorry, every quarter, we're going to be giving away a Gunner Kennel or a Gunner Food Crate. Garmin. Oh, great news on Garmin. Not that we're going to get our own discount code, but we are going to be doing some more work together. They have a new, a new fella. Um, I don't want to give his name up because then you'll be emailing him and saying, hey, hey can I get this? Can I get this? No, not yet. But he's going to come on the podcast in the future. Um, they're going to be doing a little bit more heavy-duty marketing, and we're going to have some hunting dog podcast monthly and quarterly giveaways, possibly something starting up this fall. So, yeah, for all of those who you who write and said, Do we, does Garmin have a, a, a discount code? No, they don't because of manufacturer suggested real, the, the MSRP. You know what that is if you don't look it up. Um, there's so many dealers out there, they can't let me have something that the dealers don't have. But... What they do have is the best in canine navigation and training, period. That's in fact, that's the only items that Justin uses. And, you know, if you don't want to take that for a recommendation on a dog trainer, uh, if you look at the Upland Institute, it is just chock full of Garmin products. Well, actually, the same product in many pictures. Um, and if you're looking for a place to get your Garmin product, where would you go? Ready? On three. One, two, three. Double U. W Hunting Supply, where service is beyond reproach. Service is beyond. Yeah, I think that's applicable. Deck drawer systems, you cannot, you cannot go another season without look. At least if you haven't bought one for your truck yet, at least go to some, you're going to go to any dog event. I don't care if it's AKC, NAVDA, VDD, field trial. Go to some dog event and just when the tailgates are dropped, You'll, you'll probably see them in half the trucks. Uh, just say, look, I've been thinking about one of these, and l- let me let me hear. You're not going to find anybody with a deck drawer system that came out like, yeah, I wish I wouldn't have put it in there. Oh, no. It is such an essential. It's going to be a very essential tool this, win- uh, this fall because I'm going to have some longer trips, and I'm going to have to really pack those drawers. Yeah, I can't do my junk drawer. You know, that's how I, I used to tell you, like, I, I love junk drawers. I just push it in there and look for it later. Now, I'm going to have to really itemize what's going in there. And deck drawer system has totes and toolboxes that fit the drawer like a glove. And you can t- write a Sharpie and write what's in it. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to show you this summer. I'll be, I'll be getting ready for uh, September. And I will show you my deck drawer system in detail. And they're very well, they're very, not very may well. There will be the new deck drawer gun rack in there, and my Weatherby shotgun will be right there, right? First, front and center. Front and center, I'll be using that Weatherby over under Orion. Um, no, you know, I'm going to bring a couple of my old 12 gauges, and my, like my old, my old Boswell, you know, made in 1917, same year my dad was born, same year they made my dad. Um, I'll, I'll bring a couple antiquers there because I I like that when I pass these guns down to somebody someday, I want them to know that you know I used it here and I used it there for my grandkids. But lead lead gun, the gun that's going to take the the beaten and all the and all the brush and all the ra- raindrops if need be, because I ain't taking that old Boswell out in the rain, will be my Weatherby Orion shotgun. And the dogs will, of course, on that trip and all trips and every day of the year be eating Purina Pro Plan. It's pretty much, I, I think, I can always find something to talk about with all my other sponsors, but what else do you say about the number one dog food on the planet? Okay, what, what else do you say about it? 
You can't be number one and stay number one if you're not number one. So don't be in the 1% that doesn't feed Purina. Join up. Find it. Find Purina Pro Plan. Find, there's, there's a dozen Purina foods that you could find that would just tailor make a wonderful meal. And then you would store that food in where? Your Gunner food crate. I'm telling you, that's the bomb. Back to Gunner. Anyway, canine athlete. I, uh, next week, I'm going to release an episode I did with uh, canine athlete. We talk a little hound hunting, a little bear hunting, and a lot of hydration and a lot of uh, how wilderness athlete and canine athlete came to be. So you'll stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, well, check out their packout bars. If if I was going to tell you to buy one thing from today's podcast, like today's, where are we at? You know, 10 minutes of babbling by Ron. It would be go to Wilderness Athlete and get their packout bars, okay? They got a small one. I, I don't, it's a brownie flavor. The, I like the large packout. It's like a peanut butter, but it don't taste like peanut butter. I, and, it, and it doesn't have a long shelf life because there's not a lot of crap in it. And I'm telling you what, if, if you're a person who likes to go to the store and get a granola bar and you think, oh, this is healthy, it's all sugar. No, check out Wilderness Athletes Packout Bars. I guarantee you, I will buy them from you if you don't like them. Okay? I can't say that about every flavor of everything they make because I, I, I can't get my arms around every flavor from, you know, Berry Blast to Tropical Fusion. There's a couple I like. There's a couple I like more. Um, and... Uh, but if you don't like packout bars, you're not even American. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that means. But anyway, and look at their canine athlete products for your dog. Hydrate and recover. New dog, probiotics. And I'm going to, I wonder if they could make a packout bar for the dog. Because Purina used to have something like that. And it didn't have a long shelf life. Duh, maybe that's why, because it was so healthy for dogs. Anyway. <clears throat> If you haven't checked out Gumleaf Boots in the past, just, I, I don't know how you wouldn't have because, you know, I've been talking about them for years. Jack had got some, he, he has not told me to quit talking about it. Jack has got some Royal Zips in and he's expecting hopefully another, isn't that a bad way to say it? He's expecting hopefully, well, with the supply train, the supply chain problems and the factory shutting down in Europe, it, it was Nip and tuck, as they say. Nip and tuck. What is that from, nip and tuck? I think that's from Three Stooges. Anyway, um, supply chain issues have been a killer for a lot of companies, and they pushed Jack to the limits at, at Gumleaf Boots, Gumleaf USA. Uh, but check out their boots. Get in there. Pre-order them. If they're not in, get get on the list for next year. You are not going to be it. Would you like Gumleaf Boots as much as you'd like a pack-out bar? Like in the in a short moment, no, because you're not going to eat a gum leaf boot because it's like 80% gum rubber and you'll be chewing all day. But uh, that's another one. You buy a pair of gum leaf boots and I'll buy them back from you if you don't like them, but only if they're in my size. Upland Institute, be a better trainer. Now this is this is all tied in here. If if you made it this far with 13 minutes, okay, you know what the Upland Institute? It's online pointing dog training for you, not just new, but maybe a person who's never really taken training seriously and wants to start a dog on the right program, well, here's something else you can start on the right foot with, okay? RGS, my favorite habitat organization, has an inaugural habitat tour and new hunter seminar Saturday, August 13th at the Gladwin Field Trial Grounds in Meredith, Michigan, okay? Now, I have not been to the Gladwin Field Trial Grounds. Now, Justin has. He's judged there quite a bit. He said he might even shoot out there and go. But uh, Dr. Ben Jones will be there, and they'll have speakers. They, they say that I'll be there, so I must have to be there. It says, in addition, Ron Bame of the Hunting Dog Podcast will be in attendance to produce a podcast. I will. So if you are anywhere near in drivable distance to Meredith, Michigan, and you want to learn a little bit about habitat, maybe you're, pretty, maybe you're one of those grouse hunters that, you know, Oh, I, I know where my grouse are. And if you, if you broke a leg and had to spend the night there, you wouldn't know anything about the fauna or the flora in the grouse woods. Learn about grouse habitat. That's how you learn to find grouse. And then, of course, I'll tie this right in. 
once you've trained your dog with the Upland Institute, you're going to have a better grouse dog. I guarantee that. I don't know how, and I'm not buying it. I'm not buying your dog back if it doesn't come out to be true. But come out and join us. It's going to be a really, really, it's going to be a, we're going to have, we're going to be, we're going to be in the woods. We're going to learn, we're even going to learn, we're even going to learn a little bit about field trial because that's where they run the field trials. And, uh, but it's, it's just going to be all about habitat, the bird. Um, they'll have DNR biologist Bruce Barlow and Adam Bump be giving a presentation on the habitat. And that place is groomed. That, I've only been told about it. The Gladwin Field Trial Grounds would be like going into the king's kingdom to go hunt, like where Robin Hood would go hunt deer. Like the best woods. These are groomed for field trials. It's one of the few field trial places that only run on wild birds. So it's very restricted in when they can run grouse and woodcock trials. And it is supposed to be, you'll come, you'll come out of there just a better hunter knowing what to look for when you go, especially if you're new, okay? Now, you know, I don't, I don't think, well, no, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. Um, there's camping. There's motels everywhere near. So it's the inaugural Habitat Tour and New Hunter Seminar. You could get a hold of, you could get a hold of Kevin Stewart at 810-516-7068 or just email Roger Moore chapter. Roger Moore, like the actor that played 007. That's the RGS chapter name. Roger Moore chapter at gmail.com and get some information. Sign up and I'll see you up there. I think I'm going to camp. Oh, I haven't. If, if the weather's good, I'll bring a tent and a sleeping bag. But if the weather isn't good, I ain't camping. I'm going to get one of those little old mom and pop motels up there. And, and we'll do a podcast right outside in the parking lot. Love you guys. Love you girls. Always love you girls more. That and Thank you, that <laughs> and that this button. This meeting is being recorded. I usually record this off my Zoom, but this is a backup. Uh, anyway, hey, everybody. It's Ron Bain with the Hunting Dog Podcast. I am on the phone today with a repeat guest, Camille Rice, a friend of mine from Michigan who has been with the Weimariner breed for more decades than she will admit to me, and a new handler from Canada by the name of Claire. Is it a Tricky, right? That's your email address. Yes. It is Tricky because I've never – I mean, yes. I'm kind of a name freak. Like, in Chicago growing up, if you heard a last name, like, if the Dombrowskis moved in, you know, somebody would back in the day say, oh, a new Polish family moved in, right? Or or the Flanagans, a new Irish – and I'm like, tricky? What the heck is a tricky? Where, where, so I, I, can't put a, I can't put a nationality to it, so I feel, I feel uh, defenseless. Um, oh, I am British. British. My mom and dad are both from England, yes. Oh, yes. tricky. You mean like tricky. Tricky. <laughs> tricky. I'm Claire Elizabeth Tricky. Okay. <laughs> Claire, that would be English, Claire Elizabeth, yeah. So anyway, yes, Cla- Claire yes. Tricky. Um, she contacted me last year, or not last year, earlier this year, and then stayed in touch on Instagram. First time dog, or first time bird dog owner. She has a Weimariner. Um, she wrote me and sent me a picture of her dog's day and the score, which was wonderful. And knowing that I wanted to get Cam back on, I, I kind of want to get that back and forth perspective of how that, especially, and I don't like saying this, the Weimariner is not a minority breed in this country, but it's kind of a minority breed in NAVDA. It's not one of the most run dogs in NAVDA. Um, True. Um, so, so Claire had her, her maiden voyage with, uh, what's your, your dog's name, Claire? My dog's name is Adley. Adley. It's another English name, Adley. And okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll forgive you for that. You can, is everything, every, <laughs> do you go back to England at all? No. <laughs> uh no no not for i don't even know it's probably been 22 years okay all right maybe longer than that i don't even remember i was just a kid yeah so, um yeah hey cam let's start let's start yeah. a little bit you know uh timber doodle wimes is your is your kennel right yeah um, yes ron yeah give 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 everybody just a little rundown of what you've done and how long you've done it oh my goodness well i've been involved with the wine breed. Well, my parents had them before I was born, so I really have been in the breed, around the breed for most of my life, maybe a period of 10 years when I was probably like 20s, uh, 30s, that I did not have a wine. But since then, I've had wines 
I'm a hunter first and foremost, as you know, um, but I do believe that me as a breeder should be out testing my dogs and proving their abilities in some venue. And after many, many years of doing AKC things, I kind of found not done, I kind of found a home and I really enjoy the training part of that, that uh, system. So I run utility dogs, ram dogs at the Invitational, um, a bunch of breeders awards and all, you know, all in not or NA and utility and invitational. So we're, we're trying to make a difference and we, we will keep plugging. I'm training this afternoon. So, <laughs> well, you know, you say trying to make a difference. I mean, like there's so many good dogs out there, but right. you know, and the wine had a reputation. I don't know if it's even a reputation, but I guess, would you call Cam, was it a fall from grace with the, the mainstream hunter? Back in the day, I, I would say that's fair. Back when, uh, you know, when when I got my first wine after a little hiatus without them, I was so worried about getting a wine that wouldn't hunt or a wine that had, you know, mental problems. Or, <laughs> I've seen all that. We've all seen that. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> yeah, and, I, and we've seen those dogs. We we know they're out there, and that's that's sad, but they are. So when we got Cody. She was just a natural hunter from day one. She was, you know, I, I think I told you the story, Ron, that I couldn't get anyone to take the woman in the wine to hunt with or to train. Right. I, and I had trained for many, many years, but I did not know how to start a gun dog. So I was really worried about making mistakes with her. And I finally, finally contacted Jim Ripkema over at Pine Hill Kennel. And he, he took me and the dog. So I got started with them and, you know, he was really good at explaining things and I felt comfortable enough to go on from there, but it was quite the process back then. I called so many people because the internet wasn't there back then. And I was right. calling all these people out of the phone book, trying to get all these dog trainers to take me to train the, you know, to help me train the dog. And they'd either take the dog, wanted no part of us as a pair. I think they, you know, who knows what they were well, thinking, but yeah, I mean, I don't think it was as much a, um, well, you you know, somebody could read into that and say, well, they didn't want to help a woman. But I think it's trainers back in the day, it was much more uh, somebody just dropped their dog off at a trainer. And nowadays it's so much more interactive. But right. your struggle to find that, um, well, thank goodness Jim was around over at Pine Hill. Yeah, yeah he sold me my first my first good German yeah. short here. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he and I got along really, really well. And, of course, Justin was – just a young man. I mean, he was very young. He had just come back from, I think he was in Montana or Idaho. He had just come back to work in Michigan at that time. Right. So it was that long ago, but if, you know, they were great. I had a great time. They really enjoyed watching me learn how to train my own dog. I think I did six or eight sessions with them and then I felt comfortable enough to go on my own. Right. You know, and since then I've, you know, I've used all sorts of different methods over the years, but now I think I've got my what I do kind of dialed in that works for me works for my dogs I understand my dogs I know you know where I need to improve like I have two dogs right now that I'm training that are completely different dogs they're related um one's a natural duck search dog and the other one needs a little bit more help with that but she's phenomenal in the field whereas my young male who's two you actually judged his NA test and that was a quite the day um <laughs> I don't remember, do you remember I, that? I I probably do if you fill in the blanks but that was okay, only so yeah he he was seven months old. He was, you know, he was just like that teenage time and he wouldn't bring me the bird. So he was parading, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. He got to the water and he went into duck. I mean, literally started doing a duck search and I couldn't get him out of the water. And you're like, Cam, you need to get him out of the water. And I'm like, Ron, I've thrown my hat. I've thrown my sunglasses next to my shirt. We don't want to see that. So you guys got, you guys got me a bird. So here I am on the shore on my knees, waving this chucker around, trying to lure him in. And he got close enough, and I tackled him, and I had him on my chest <laughs> I, on my back. Of course I remember that now. Yeah. I oh, my God. <laughs> I <should laughs> the bird up, like, trying to get – you guys got the bird from me. And I'm, like, literally – I had a white tank top on under my Columbia shirt, and it was black at Aki's Pond. So that dog was black. He comes out, and I have this huge dog print on my white tank top. And it, so at the end, I'm thinking, oh, what are they going to do with this? I mean, I, this is just terrible. He ended up with a two in cooperation, which what it was, but he still was like a really high prize too. Right. Everything else was there. The obedience just was not. Right. So, and and we're know, not looking for obedience. At that point, it's a cooperation thing, you know. Oh, um, yeah. But so, you, you may have to override it with a little bit of obedience, you know, when they've got that, you know, that kind of gur and that kind of go, you know. So. Yeah. 
Well, so yeah, yeah I do remember that. that. I've had a couple people that I've had to basically send into the water to get their dogs over the years. So, uh, yeah. Claire, so now you, you get this dog. What made you pick the Weimaraner breed? Um, well, I saw a Weimaraner and I thought to myself, what a beautiful animal that is, you know, and, uh, I kind of started looking into the breed a little bit more. And one of my horseshoeing clients actually referred me to where I got Adley from. So that's, it's not really a long story. So you didn't, just more or less... you didn't do the Google search and the breed, like what's the best breed for me. And you just, no, you no, just, you no. kind of got smitten by a, 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 a visual. That's right. Yeah, that's yes, how I got married sure. twice. Exactly how I got married twice. <laughs> I got spitting right on the visual. But, you know, 50% of the yeah. time it works out. Um, yeah, yeah. So then did you, how did you get involved to get to the level of testing? Because, like, you have no background in this. Was no. it Was it the breeder that walked you through it? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, I actually knew my breeder for about eight years before I purchased the dog. Um, it, was, it just wasn't the right time. I wanted to make sure that I had the, the, the time for the dog because I knew that it was going to be extremely time consuming. Um, so, you know, talked to them, visited them, saw some litters of puppies, got to know their dogs. And, you know, Sue, I spent a lot of time with Sue, and I do now too. Um, and she kind of started explaining to me about the testing and, you know, the abilities these dogs have. And I thought, well, let's see how the natural ability thing goes then. <laughs> so when you, and, when you uh, pick the, when you pick the wine, you weren't actually picking it like with this NAVDA dream in your head or anything. You just, no, you just no. saw the dog, you found the breeder. Turns out, you know, the breed, well, you know, as that all chained together. Yes. And now you're like, Oh, it's like finding a real good painting and finding out I'm supposed to be a painting, collect, you know, a collector now, right? It's yes. Like, I didn't yes, know that was. Yes. I didn't know that was a famous painting, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's amazing. Um, I can't believe. I I really don't have words to to explain how amazing it's been. Like, there's no description. It's just been so awesome. Like the dog is awesome. The people I've met are awesome. All the networking. I mean. When we went down to Camille's, that was like the most amazing weekend ever. And I was so scared to go because I didn't want to go to take the dog over the border. And, it, you know, it's just been awesome. Awesome. Aw like, it's been the best year of my entire life. It wow. really has. Wow. Like, it's, it, I, yeah, it's astounding. It really is. It um, really is. Uh, Cam, how does that, I mean, I'm sure this story has repeated itself to you, like, how many times over the years, right? Where <laughs> you, get, oh, yeah. you get somebody that you know, is interested in the breed. And, you know, you and I have had a lot of conversations, Cam, over the years. And we kind of roll our eyes like, well, yeah, we're, of course we're trying to place these dogs in a home. And and y you think every one of them is going to do the right thing by the dog. And it, whatever right. the percentage is, whether it's 20, 30, or half of them. Um, how does, does this sound like a story that's repeated just like you've done it over the years? Every, I hear this so many times. Our, our market is really hunters. We don't, I mean, I don't even require natural ability anymore because I just, I just don't. But yet I'll have people that come along to a training session and th these people all hunt. They go out and they see their young dog doing all these incredible things in the field and they decide, you know, I think I want to try out this Nabda game. Yeah. And they do. And some of, some of the people that I've sold dogs to over the years have actually gone on and put VCs on their dogs and when I when they left with that puppy, they had no intention of running, you know, utility or going any further than natural ability. And yet they do, and some of them have gone all the way. And it's just such a rewarding process. It's such a nice thing for us to see, you know, these these dogs being taken to the highest potential that they can be, and you know now their family members guiding at preserves or hunting, you know, as much as they possibly can during the winter. Yeah. Um, it's really. But I've heard Claire's story over and over and over again. And, and I'll, you know, that's where, you know, I've told people this many, many times. I, I get the emails because of the reach of the podcast and, and the mm -hmm. years it's been on. I literally get an email, and it could have been from Claire, but it, was, it wasn't. But it would have been, I'm thinking of a Weimariner, a Griffin, and a Poodle Pointer. And you're like, oh, my God, you know, make, make up your mind, right? You, you're better off doing it, you know, Claire's way and just fall in love with a dog and then find the breeder. But I've told people in the past, I said, you know what, try to find, if you can find a breeder near you or a breeder that will work with you, even if it's a bit of a, a haul, 
you'll end up falling in love with the breed sometimes because right. the breeder's that compassionate about what they're doing. Um, and I don't know if that was, I don't know if that's a new thing I've seen in the last 20 years or if it's always been there, but I just don't think it was always there like that. Well, what? I think the internet has opened, you know, the world to so many people to research these breeds and really, find, I mean, it was always there, but you'd have to, you'd have to search a little bit longer. And 20 years ago, the internet isn't what it is now. Right. So I think <laughs> that has opened up a whole nother level of, you know, puppy sales and all that stuff. Right. Um, Claire, when you, when you got the, uh, so you had really, did you have the intention of hunting the dog or did you just want the Weimaraner first and foremost? Um, I mean, you knew it was a hunting, you knew it was a hunting breed, right? I think. <laughs> uh, actually, at first, no. Honestly, Ron, I haven't been really hunting that long either. This is kind of new, new, new territory for me. Um, but uh, obviously, upon more research, realizing that yes, it is a hunting breed, and um, you know, over the years, I definitely was more interested in um, in obtaining the dog to go hunting with because. It's it's a wonderful uh, experience to hunt with a dog. Now that I've been doing it a little bit, it's it's fantastic. And and the other thing um, that was of huge interest to me was blood tracking. Okay. So, yeah, yeah you mentioned that reason. before before we hit the record button. Um, mm -hmm. You've had some blood tracking uh, seminars or blood tracking groups yeah. on, on a Zoom room. Yeah. What? Yeah. How did you? Did your breeder steer you toward that as well? Or did, did you just yes. start doing yes. research? Like, I want this. I want everything. <laughs> no. Um, well, a few years ago, uh, unfortunately, I lost a deer. And I tried to get in touch with some people that had dogs that did blood tracking. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not an easy thing to get someone to come out sometimes and give you a hand, especially when you fudged up all the blood trail and all that stuff, right? So yeah. I thought, you know, if I ever get a dog... I'm going to make sure I can, I can use it to, to track a deer because this is, this is just really unfortunate. And, you know, I ended up finding, um, actually it was two deer, I should say, but the one deer I ended up finding, and if I'd had a blood tracking dog, it, it would have been so easy to find it. It was just in so much brush and, right. and so on and so forth. Like probably 30 meters from the trail, we, I walked 10 times the night before and, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of sad when that happens. So yeah, that's, that, that, that's you know. one of the things that keeps me from being a big game hunter. You know, not, I mean, I would like to trade my dog for it, but it's like, mm -hmm. Oh, when you knock a deer down and you don't, you know, it's, you kind of, ex, it's, it's, it's not fair to say, and nobody, and that's why we train our dogs for tracking and for recovery. But when you lose a pheasant or a grouse, it, it hurts, but when you lose mm -hmm. a deer and that's, you know, that's 40 pounds or 50 pounds of meat. You're, you're losing on top yeah. of it, you know? Yeah. Now, you know, I didn't, yeah. in the beginning, I, I was mentioning, you know, Cam lives just north of me in, in Michigan. I don't think anybody, unless they could tell by the way you say about, that you're from, Can what part of Canada are you in? Southwestern Ontario. Okay, northwestern. Is that by Wawa, or is that further? No, south, southwestern. South, oh, southwestern. So we, okay. Yeah, we're located on the north shore of Lake Erie, oh, around so that area. You're basically from Ohio. I can see it across the lake on a calm day. Right, right, okay. <laughs> and so yeah. for you up there, is it is it uh, woodcock and grouse? I would say, or do you do you see anything else up um, that way? We don't have. We have a very small uh, amount of woodcock and grouse um, mm -hmm. this way. The further north you go, though, um, there's a lot of grouse up northern Ontario. Um, we do have woodcock on. The farm that I that I run the dogs on, but they're very far and few between. So I flushed up one with Adley um, this spring. Actually, it was just sitting in the leaf matter and flew away. I thought, oh my gosh, how wonderful! A woodcock. <laughs> well, you, you know, you'd mentioned so, uh, that you actually. I was assuming that you didn't get a hunting season, but you actually said you started hunting. Uh, yeah, she was five, five and a half months old. What What were you chasing yeah. then? What were you after? Um, we were planting some chuckers. For them okay and that yeah. was is that yeah. through the breeder did you i mean that's a whole nother thing you, you got to learn how to shoot a shotgun which is not like shooting a rifle and then you got to no. find you got to find birds to train your dogs and then you got to find a place yeah. to go what was that journey like um well i have had a ton of support for my breeder like i i know i couldn't have done this without them and um 
it also is obviously a benefit that I'm good friends with Sue. So her and I have gone and um, hunted a few times, just the two of us. Uh, and um, we are members of a few, well, there are more members of more places than I am. I'm a member of a place called Thames Ridge, which is about 40 minutes east of us here. And we've also trained at a place called Gold Creek. Um, where else? Hollett Marsh. We did NAV training there. But I've always done all of my bird training with my breeder. Gotcha. Cam, yeah. are you, how many, Camille, how many times, I say Cam, everybody knows this is Camille, but she told me a while back I should be calling her Cam. Um, <laughs> I got to get in that habit. But Cam, when the, we've said the story's kind of repeated itself as a breeder, especially a longtime breeder like yourself. Um, is that a similar path as well? Or you kind of mentioned you, you kind of get the hunting client more than the testing client, but what's it turned into? Is it 50, 50, or are you getting as many people onto the, the nav, the nugget or the uh, carrot, so to speak? How's so that? our market on our website, it basically says, if you're not going to hunt your dog, don't call. I know that sounds really rude. No, that's, but that's, that's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it, it, it does say that. And, you know, I, I can't say that I don't have dogs in non-hunting homes, but they usually come highly recommended right. from someone else. Like I had a, a knob the judge from Quebec have a really good, good friend that wanted a wine. And so he referred her to us and, and gave her a glowing recommendation. And so she got her first wine from me three years ago, and now she has her second one that just ran its NA test run by the Navda judge over the weekend. The dog was great scores and everything, but he, it, he just didn't swim. It, the, he wasn't in training long enough for the swimming part, but he was really, really, the fact that this woman who didn't want to see birds shot or anything like that <laughs> let this dog go off to Ben, you know, probably know Benoit Martino. Yeah. Um, he's, so she sent her dog off with Ben, and Ben ran the dog in natural ability. So scores great everywhere but swimming. She was tickled to pieces that her dog did that, and now she's coming here with her <laughs> husband in August, and she wants us to run her dogs just so she can see them in the field. And she said, I'll give you all the French commands, and I'm like, I think I can figure this one out. But, <laughs> so, yeah, a really cool story. Um, awesome. She's so excited about watching her dogs do what they were bred to do now. I, I've seen many people uh, over the years, you know, do do this as, and you mentioned, Cam, you don't have it as a requirement to do the test. You encourage it, of course, especially if someone right. comes back and, and you, they hear you talking the words natural ability test. They're like, huh, what, what? They start, their ears perk up a little bit. Um, but I've seen so many people that had that path. They got the dog. And then they found out all the stuff the dog is supposed to do, and they're like, well, I guess I, oh, they like the dog so much that they're like, okay, I'm going to get a gun, I'm going to get a shotgun, I'm going to get a truck, I need to get a dog box, oh, I need to get a car. <laughs> you know, pretty soon, it's almost like the, it's an organic growth into being a, a, a wing shooter almost. It, that's true. I've actually seen a lot of women, you know, a lot of the men that come to us are already hunters, but I've seen a few women, other breeders, friends of mine that really didn't hunt they got their dog and they loved the dog so much that they became you know like really involved in the game I, one one not the judge now she's so involved she said she didn't come up the conventional way she didn't start hunting until she got her dog yeah and now she you know she's gone on grouse trips to wisconsin and you know out west to hunt pheasants and sharpies so she's really devoted to her dogs now it's really kind of been cool to watch her it sounds like Claire's got a twin sister down there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Claire, you mentioned you mentioned the blood tracking, and I, I yeah. mean, I want to have both of you talk on it. Um, I think most dogs, you know, certainly a, a bird dog is, I think, going to be, if the tracking is there in the dog. But I mean, they can teach German shepherds the blood track, Labradors the blood track. You could teach a lot of dogs the blood track. Yeah. Um, what What was your have you actually gone through some of the process of blood tracking now that you, or did you, were you messing that with that before your test or is this now you got your natural ability test down? Now you're going to see, did you, did you mix um, it or did you keep it separate? I, I didn't do too much tracking. Um, I just, I noticed Adley at a very young age and she always had her nose on the ground. So I didn't really want to encourage that before she kind of got on birds a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but we did um, a blood tracking clinic in September of last year. No. 
and we just exposed her to a liver drag, which was successful, which was good, which yeah. I guess that's kind of the main thing with the young dogs is to, not to do too much, just right. a little bit. Um, but the people that ran the clinic there did such an amazing job teaching us that, um, you know, we can, we can kind of continue that from the clinic. Yeah. And then we organized um, a clinic down in southwestern Ontario, which we held the weekend after the natural ability test. <laughs> yeah. So we're trying to get more of a chapter down this way because there really isn't a lot of people um, that are available to help other people with the blood tracking. So, right, right. And there's plenty, yeah. of, there's plenty of deer hunters up that way, I would have guessed. Oh, I'd say, yeah. yep. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Um, Cam, have you ever done any of the tracking with the YMs? I, I would have not known that, uh, I shouldn't say that, the, the ones I see that are blood tracking are not usually YMs, but that's just, there's no reason for it other than that, or do you think it's a, a strong propensity in the breed, or is it is it so a training they're, thing? They're tracking. They, and I have had dogs that blood trailed over the years, my own personal dogs that I used on blood trails back when I deer hunted. I don't anymore. I don't have the patience to sit there. Um, and I have quite a few puppy owners that use their dogs, their wimes for blood trailing as well. So it's, it's they're, the wimes that they're used for it do tend to be very good at it. That, that's interesting. And will they, just like in pheasant tracking, they got to kind of change gears for the, fe, you know, for the pheasant track, right? If they, if they overrun it or just start searching, they're not, they're not tracking. Right. So you see that that they can find that gear to concentrate. Now, obviously, you know, in the states, I don't know about Canada, Claire, but in the states, it's got to be on lead. You know, like a thirty foot lead. Um, yeah, yeah, you do, have to be on a lead. Do you find it like a pulling contest, or do they find that other gear? Like, you know, that that's really interesting. It's it's not about me getting off this lead. It's about me getting to the to the blood or to the to the end of the track. Asking me or Cam? Well, sorry. I guess both. Yeah, because I, I, I always think of Wimes as these fast running, hard charging, like cover some ground dogs, and mm -hmm. I always would think like, oh my god, first time you get my blood track, you know, mm -hmm. oh, they're just gonna so pull, the very, they're gonna pull you right through, <laughs> right through the. So the very, very first blood trail I did, and this was a long time ago because this this dog died three years ago at fifteen and a half. He had done his nod the test, his NH test, did well on the track. Guy was hunting a property not too far from ours, and he knew that I was trying to do blood trailing with my old dog, Blue. Mm -hmm. So he came over. It, he said, hey, I just you know, shot this deer. I know I hit it. Can you help me? He said, wait, we can't, you know, can't find it. So we get there, and I, I didn't have a harness. Now I do have a harness. Didn't have a harness back then. So I clipped the long line to his, his collar. Mm -hmm. He gets on this blood trail, Ron, and they have the flashlights. I have the dog because it's dark now. <laughs> and this dog is literally dragging me through the woods. I'm getting hit in the face with branches, and his nose is to the ground, and he's, like, just going crazy. So as we, you know, he, I, like I said, I'm getting hit in the face with all these branches. My ex is like, watch out. You know, you're going to get hit in the face. I'm like, I just got hit in the face. So finally, he gets to this deer that had been shot. He, it jumps, he jumped it. We didn't let it lay long enough. So about this time, it takes off again. So we stopped for a second, but he dragged me to it, Ron. Oh, my God. And I mean, then all of a sudden, it starts raining. The flashlights go out, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's, but the dog didn't want to quit. I yeah. mean, he was probably maybe 16, 17 months old when we did that. And wow. it was just quite the rush. And after that, I used him often to blood trail. And he was very, very good at it. But... Never been trained for it, but he dragged me, and I don't even know how far we went because we are in the middle of the woods in Michigan in the pitch black. You never really <laughs> lost around here. You know that. But then it started to rain, so it was just this huge shit show. <laughs> but we never <laughs> it We knew it was out there, but it was still a heck of an experience because he dragged oh, me right in. By, by statute of limitations, I can tell this story. I had a, a black wire here named Hasco and a friend of a friend had shot a deer and he asked if he called up Jeff and he says, Hey, can Ron bring his, his, it was a wire hair. He was a half registered draught back in the day. They could do that. But anyway, I said, well, he's never had any experience. He goes, yeah, but those dogs are supposed to be great at it. I said, well, I don't, I don't know. You know, we'll give it a whirl. Mm -hmm. And truth be told, did not have a damn leash on me. You know, we didn't have a gun with us or a bow. We just thought we were going to recover a deer. And I'm like, ah, what the heck? And, 
he managed to point like four grouse on that blood track. And I'm like, he's not blood track. He's hunting for grouse. And I, he doesn't do that good when I have a gun in my hands, right? But everywhere we go, he's going on point. <laughs> there goes the grouse, right? And I said, guys, I don't, I don't think we're... And he says, no, the deer, the, I know the deer went this way. And we just kept kind of combing the area. And I could kind of hack him and keep him in. But I, didn't, I said, no, nah, he doesn't have it. And we got back to the track. Or, I'm sorry, back to the truck. And which was parked right by, the, it was on private property. It was right by the tree that he shot from. And he pointed to where, you know, I don't know how people point at where the deer was and get that completely wrong, but that's probably the, the panic of the situation. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Haskell just starts putting his nose to the ground, like, like, like he was picking up food, you know, a totally different demeanor. And just, <laughs> you could hear the snuffing in his nose. And he literally, we watched him. I'm like, look at him. Look. Instead of walking with him, you know, we're like, look at him go. Oh, do you think he's tracking it? You know, we don't know. Anyway, so he gets up to this, he gets up to this log, this deadfall, and he goes on point. I'm like, oh, it's probably a grouse, right? You know, grouse run, especially if there's people in the woods. They'll just keep running away. And I'm like, Hasco, come on, hurry up. Let's go. Get back here. Come on. And all of a sudden, this deer stands up behind this log and you could see the way it was arched and it had a, a cut on its back. I was like, oh my God, he just, you know, he just blood tracked that deer. That yep. we, we just sent him in the wrong direction. So the same thing. It's like, I never formally trained him. And mm -hmm. in, in that case, it turned out to be a foot race. And then he actually killed the deer. Um, I oh. hope, I hope that, I don't know if that's legal or not, but that was a long time ago. Actually, uh, it was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, it was. I just expected to help this guy out, and I saw something like you were saying, Cam, that you just couldn't believe. That you know, when when people say, or I'm quoting Justin, you know, instincts don't expire. I mean, they right. can be, they can, talent can be brought out, and things can be made better. But you know, instincts are instincts, and that is just in them them European breeds like that. So yes. I would assume the wine was, I know the wine was used for big game, but not, I don't, I just don't remember if it was necessarily for the driven game or the boar. Do you remember, Cam, how that history goes with the wine? Yeah, they've done both. They do both in Europe. It depends on the country and, you know, all those things. But they do driven deer hunts over there, and they, I know they use them on boar as well. Um, you, you, neither of you are going to go after uh, wild pigs yet now with your wines, are you? I'll pass on that one. No. Okay, good job. No. Good, good job. I don't. I don't want to see Claire's Instagram post next year of her dog in an armor suit with a with a protection no. collar on. Okay. No, no, no. Don't have to worry about that. <laughs> uh, Claire, have you now that you've been? And I know this is kind of like you know, Navda can be a little cult like. Um, I'm going to go back and complain about Navda in a little bit about the fact that years ago I proposed that we started introducing some blood tracking to the utility test but you know they didn't they didn't like that idea and like i think a lot of people would but now that you've gotten your na test and and i've told people i was just on a phone with a good friend of mine susan this morning and she got a, a a two in tracking in all fours and she says she goes i want to run the dog over again but i'm not going to she goes i know the dog did a good job i said of course the dog did a great job but when you get that when you get that max score did you already start going? I think I can do the next level. Or are you? Or are you just going to be? Oh, okay. Let's hear it. <laughs> well, um, we also did Field Dog Junior. Okay. Um, this past well, it was three runs, mm -hmm. um, and she got a ninety-one percent average, which I was astounded by. It's better um, than I ever did in school. <laughs> And we actually signed up for Water Dog Junior. So we're doing that the last weekend in wow. July. Yeah. And then um, there's Field Dog and then Water Dog and then Field Dog Excellent, Water Dog Excellent. And then there's all the testing in the U.S., which, yes, I plan on coming down, <laughs> Cam. You're welcome. Do those tests. So, yes. <laughs> now, is th this would be uh, case or CKC, right? Canadian Kennel Club? Yes, yes. Cam, is that, Canadian. do you know enough about it, Cam, to compare it to our AKC stuff? Is it similar or different? Very, very similar. Very, very similar. I, I have never actually seen them, but from what I've been told, it's very similar to our AKC Junior Hunter. Okay. Um, 
level field dog is like senior hunter and then their field dog excellent is like master hunter i think they right. only have to pass times though i think three. I three for each level i think so yes okay so a little little bit different and i know that they score them differently but the title itself is pretty much the same right there, there's beginning intermediate and advanced levels of of that kind yeah. of stuff yeah how yeah. far of a, a haul is that for you claire to to do these events um it really depends um the we go to a place called roughwood game farm which is located in cayuga and that is approximately let's say two hours from here mm -hmm. and hall at marsh is about an hour and a half um, those are the places we've been doing the testing and the NAVDA training so far. Gotcha. And, that, and then obviously traveling to Camille's was four and a half hours right. or so. And, so. and well worth it from what I hear, right? Oh my gosh, yes. Best weekend of my life. Yes! <laughs> it's now, awesome. Cam, tell, tell me about that because I, Claire, I, I think, Claire, you sent me a message. If, is, there any way you'd yeah. be, is there any way you'd be coming up there? And I, I forget what I had to do. I don't know if I was in Alaska. You were or, in Alaska. Yeah. Well, that was, that was hard to choose between That's Alaska, okay. Alaska and Michigan. That's okay. You'll get a pass on that. <laughs> um, but, Cam, what was this event that you, you held that you did? What was oh, that? There is a very well-known German trainer named Annalena Pilgrim. who is She's very well-known in Europe. Mm -hmm. She wants to get known a little bit better here in the U.S., and she, they asked me if they could hold the seminar here. And I, and I was very honest with this, now, and I'll say it publicly, too. Very few wine breeders train their own dogs. That's just the way it is. They don't. Yeah. Um, there's the handful of us that do. You know, mm -hmm. You're always going to have that. Yep. And I told her, I said, the attendance for the higher levels probably won't be there for wine, so you're going to have to get some DK people or whatever, whatever else breed you can get. And that's what it ended up, ended up to be. The, the junior levels, there were a few wines. And the senior levels, there were mostly other breeds and one wine. So she came here. We had, you know, we had never met each other. Of course, we talked on, you know, via messenger, talked on the phone. I had never met Claire. Um, we had a big party, Ron. It was a good oh. time. Claire took over my kitchen, cooked us <laughs> venison loin and this amazing meal both nights. Wow. Um, we had cold venison sandwiches, which was delicious the second night. And I was happy to just sit in the garage, talk to everybody <laughs> else, fine, while Claire's, you know, cooking her little heart out in my kitchen. <laughs> so we, we had a good time. It was very much fun. I think Annalena's coming back here in September, and mm -hmm. she's going to stay with me for a few days. Oh, nice! Um, so I wish. It's, it's, I'll bet you it's. I'll bet you it's when I'm going to be gone. It's if it's going to be. Yeah, I'm going to be gone almost all September. Oh, see, I'm going to miss it again. But she's coming back next year. If yeah, you, I think she's coming back next year too. If, I, mean, I mean, I'm set up for it here. I have 60 acres. We can train here. I have access to so many private lakes. Oh yeah, it's silly work that well. Plus, I have you know like living court. I have like a second house in my basement. It's finished and yeah. very comfortable people to stay so i had her stay here and we, had, we it was really a nice time it was really good to get to know her and see the way she did things i didn't run any of my dogs in her seminar because we do i do things differently right and i just you know i but i watched and i learned an awful lot from her and we you know she got to see my dogs do their duck searches um no it was, kind of, was her training I, then all based on what the the fci you know the, yes. the okay with the uh oh whatever the um the name of the, the VGP and the HCP and stuff yes, like that, yes. right? Okay. Yes, and they don't they don't use e collars either, so that's interesting. Her, yeah, it's really interesting. They're, they're not legal over there, so she has to train her dogs to do things without you know the electric stimulation. And, and sometimes I'm not so sure about that because I think you have to be really hard on a dog to get them broke without electronics. But you know, I and I'm not a hands on type of person. I'm not really a hard-handed trainer i don't like to be oh I come on you you were a state patrol officer you were a state cop in the state of michigan don't tell me you, you don't tell me you didn't rough up a couple of drunk drivers back <laughs> in the day cam no i didn't say i didn't like to hurt people come on. <laughs> i think we'll use that line for the intro i didn't say i didn't like to hurt people <laughs> uh, you know, that's funny. It's that same mentality. Um, I went over to a uh, wire-haired visual gathering in Wisconsin, and uh, Zofie Mychek, or whatever her last name is, she came over, and she's kind of the breeder 
of a lot of the Weimaraner or a lot of the wire-haired Vishlas that are doing really well in this country. And most of them are out of her lines, one or two generations, or directly from her. And same thing, it, they do things differently. Um, but then here's a dog, a breed that I would call, you know, softer. Wait, wait, ta- hang on. Tagus. <laughs> Tagus. Oh. He was laying off of his bunk thing. And his head was flat on the floor. <laughs> I'm like, don't you don't look like that. That's a bad look. I didn't like that. Sorry. Go back to sleep. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, and, and that same thing. She trains without a collar. Um, uses a lot of sit early on with the dogs. And, and it's so contradictory to a lot of you know, trainers here. Like, oh, I don't want my dog to sit. I'm afraid he'll sit on point or he'll sit on default. And she had us doing things that I was skeptical of but open-minded to and i was like well that's there's always another way to get a dog trained it's really cool yeah um definitely so and and she is she is she planning on moving to the states or she just wants because you know it's not or is she is she also a breeder of a breed here and that are here and are her some of her dogs here she brought so she has wines too okay she trains all breeds in fact i didn't realize this until we actually sat and talked she had run some of the dogs I sent to Europe through their European tests. Really? I did not. I thought the owners ran them and come to find out, no, she ran them, which was interesting because then we could talk about what she saw. Yeah. You know, some of the dogs I sent over there. That's she, interesting. She's an interesting person. She's a second, her, she's like a second generation dog trainer. Her grandfather who raised her wow. was a big time dog trainer. In fact, he appears in a, a Weimaraner book that someone did about the European wines. This sounds like a screenplay book. getting in oh. the mix. Yeah, I think we can do it's something really with that. And she's got a daughter now, and her daughter's maybe three. And her daughter is already trying to be involved with the dog training game, which is really adorable. You know, you so, women, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to get, I'm going to be old white guy for me. You women are taking over everything, okay? <laughs> okay. That's what we do. You're, 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 you're cops, and then nobody even knows that Claire is a farrier and a taxidermist. Like, yep. like how how many how many women are one or the other? Let alone both of them. I mean, both, <laughs> both of them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Is there someone else out there like that? I, I have no it, idea. They they can write me. I mean, I used to like I said I was telling before we hit record. <laughs> I was telling Claire how ineffective I was when I thought I was gonna have horses back in the day, and how they literally knew I was a chicken pants, you know, and all they had to do was give me a little, and, and Claire, you're, you're, you're very tall, right? To deal with these horses, right? What are you? Oh yeah. Five Five foot two. Five foot two. (laughs) And you have no, no. She's teeny, but she's got some, she's got some guns going on because (laughs) if you've ever watched somebody shoe a horse, you know, I have a horse background as well. I was blown away when I saw her because she's much bigger and much taller and she's not. But she's very, very muscular, very strong. You can tell she's easily capable of doing the job. But it's mental with a horse, isn't it? Or, I mean, how did you, Claire, how did you get the, or Cam, too? Like, was it horses as a little kid and you just, like, you learned that you're, you you got to be in charge? Because, you know, people have the same problem with dogs when they get a dog. They let the dog become the, you know, the owner of the house. And Right. But how do you get to the point where you're not afraid of a horse? It's 1,300 pounds. Maybe you just are or you aren't, you know? So I'm a not. (laughs) I've never been scared of horses in my life. Have you, Cam? No. I was was raised with them as well. I I started showing horses when I was eight years old. So I showed horses. We always had wimes. I actually showed my wimes in obedience in the 4-H world, so that was always entertaining. You didn't see many wimes in obedience back then either, so... (laughs) Probably, yeah. probably, probably not now either. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there are a lot of wine people now that that's what they do is the obedience game. Oh, okay. As opposed to the hunting game. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, Claire, how, I know we probably talked about this the last time I had you on. I don't know if that was a year or two years ago, but um, how are the the wine numbers and the testing looking? Um, I'm not trying to give you and and Mindy and and Claire all the credit, but it seems like there's an, enough breeders out there that are, I don't want to say doing the right thing, but really pushing where it's supposed to go. Is Are you seeing a good trend, or is it the same? No, I, I, there's been a lot of improvement. We just had this debate on, on the Nob de Wine group not that long ago. Um, a gal who's 
strong field trial. She actually produces a lot of dual champions. And she questioned, you know, the results seem dismal and this and that. If you look at where we were 20 plus years ago, we are far better. I mean, yeah, you're going to have like the dog that Ben ran over the weekend in Quebec. The dog did not pass because it didn't swim, but the other scores were there. Yeah. But for the most part, seeing a trend where things good are at the wine uh, in Navda. Yeah. Uh, much better than it was. I mean, I think back in the day, you'd see, you know, the silver shop people who have outstanding dogs as well would run Navda. We ran Navda, but it wasn't wasn't like it is now. I mean, you're seeing a lot of wines run the game. Yeah, yeah, that's like interesting. More, I'd like to see more utility dogs go forward, but well, that's always the um, path, though. You know, it, it yeah. was it was kind of like uh, you know Bob Ferris with the Poodle Pointers. He started that alliance, and you know they kept raising the bar as breeders. They raised the bar in themselves every five years. Where right. in the beginning you just had to have one dog with a natural. I could be getting this wrong, but you know, say one dog. The sire had to be an N.A. dog, and the dam didn't have to be. And then a few years later, the dam had to be, and then the sire had to be U.P.T. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you guys are raising the bar, but is there a, is there a Weimaraner federation or a, a group that is working on that, or is it just breeders all just getting together and bullshitting? Early on, we, had, we, we developed a Weimaraner alliance, just mm. like the pointers, and it, it worked well for a while. Um, the woman who set it all up finally got tired of it all, and she just kind of walked from it. We have all, all of the tools to start it up again, and we've talked about doing it. Right. But we're all so darn busy, Ron. Yeah. I mean, we're just running in different directions. You know, you got, you know, Mindy running one way, and I'm going the other, and I'm loading my dogs up to go back and duck search on my own, you know, that type of thing. So we just, maybe in the winter, it's something that I should put out and see if people would want to get back into it, because... We had, we had standards on it as well, and I think it worked well. You know, health tests, obviously, we, we allowed some of the ratings test titles to be the minimum that they could have to be used in a breeding program, or at least have their litter listed on, on the alliance. I actually had to shut down the Wine Runner Alliance Facebook group because the woman that set it up just walked away from Facebook. Wow. I didn't have time to keep track of it, and I'd need more help if I was going to do that. So I, I just put it archived it and let it go. Gotcha. I'll bet you, uh, I bet you Claire will take care of the Canadian uh, chapter of that at some point, mm -hmm. or the Canadian faction of that. I'm sure. Oh, I, I think we have like a, to to. a a totally to. a totally addicted Weimariner person up there oh, now. The thoughts in my mind just completely rotating all the time about you, these dogs. Claire, are you already thinking down the road of the next dog too? Oh yes. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, and I know this is going to be really a bizarre thing I'm going to tell you, but um, Annalena also breeds wired-haired dash hounds. So um, hopefully if all things work out, timing included, um, I will hopefully be getting one of Pola's puppies. Wow. So, oh. yeah, I, I, I love that breed as well. It's kind of like the side obsession. Um, but ultimately, if I have the choice of getting that dog or another wine, it's probably going to be another wine. If right. I had to choose if between you had the two, yeah. But with enough um, with enough room and space, well, you know. Yeah, with, yeah. With three, you well, get egg roll, you know. Oh, I know. Um, so there is the possibility that someday Adley might have puppies, and if that's the case, then I would definitely keep um, a female from the litter if that was the case. Right. So, right. Yeah, and that's, you know, not going to be for a couple of years at least. Um, sure. Because she needs to get some more titles and so on. Um, hopefully utility. Yeah. Fresh fingers. Um, but that's what I would like to work towards with her. So. Yeah. Can, yeah, good girl. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, like I said, that story's been repeated. I'm just surprised at how consistent that, that journey is and it, how addicting it is. And, and it yeah. almost seems to be... I, I, and I could be completely wrong on this just because I'm always, I'm completely wrong a lot, according to Sue. So um, <laughs> yeah. it's that person who kind of gets into it, you know, later and just like, it's like, it's like finding out you could read a book. Like, you're like, oh, I want more books. Oh, and, yeah. right. and then they become like, not an influencer, but they become eventually like 
yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. And they, you, you're going to be a reference. You're, you're going to be like an extension of your friend's kennel up there at some point, you know. Where, So, Cam, I was going to ask you, that is it's pretty common. And I know I, I tried to do this with the Broncos. It, they went to far more pet homes than they went to hunting homes. Uh, I don't know why. I, maybe I know why, but we won't talk about that. It's not about Broncos today. But when you put a dog into a person's hands, do you try to offer that if you think it's right? Like, hey, down the road, because um, you know that line. You sold it to a, that person. Do, right. you, do you sometimes say, look, if, you, if everything works right and you've, you've got to ends up, you end up with a really good specimen here, I would like to possibly you know, use your mail or if you'd ever want to have it. Do you do that yourself too? Many times, yes. I, I've actually had uh, one of the females that I've read, she was a utility prize one, came here and I whelped her litter. So I'll, I'll do that, you know, depending on what my schedule is like mm -hmm. and so on. But I've done that. And I, we always like to have males out there that we can use back in our program if right. they turn out to be really – most yeah. of them do. Uh, yeah. and, we, and another thing that I do, Ron, is I mentor a lot of people. For, even even if they don't have dogs from me, if they reach out and they want help, mm -hmm. we love to help people. And we have other breeds that come here. Well, you know, Phil Phil comes here with his Magnum, yeah. and we, you know, he's actually a member of our wine club, believe it or not. <laughs> of course, so, Phil, so, of course, Phil would be. Of course, he would be. Yeah. So, so, a lot of people, you know, we it's just we like to help people, and if people get a dog from us, we're there to help them train their dog every step of the way if they choose to take us up on that. Right. We love. And like you so, said, yes. you, you'll, you'd help people with without being from your kennel. But when it is from some of your stock, it's got to be a little more. Well, it's giving you good data, right? It's giving you good information back on you know firsthand information, not just a not just a test score, which is great. Right. But yes. then to see that dog's demeanor and, and then maybe wonder, I can't believe it passed the test. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> which that could happen occasionally. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we try. I try to really, really put the right pairings together. That if they do fail, it's usually they just weren't ready for one specific element of the ta of the test. Right. You know, swimming. It can be sometimes they're not trained for the track. You know, it just depends. Usually, the field stuff goes okay. I mean, it's it's rare that I see one of my dogs running around like a maniac, busting birds, just out there chasing, and you don't typically see that. Well, you so, haven't seen Paul run the dog yet, have you, Cam? Uh, no, well, yeah, I have. He was here Saturday as well. So, so Paul was here with Hope, and I'm going to take Hope for a few weeks and uh, work with her a little bit. It'll be fun. And I was only saying that tongue in cheek because of his last dog. We called it Ten Pin because it it would it would look at a grouse like a head pin on a bowling alley and just go like, "That's where I'm going." <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and, and it might be Paul. Uh, it might be you know, but I didn't know if. Uh, so you're gonna, you're going to kind of make sure that doesn't happen for him. I hope. Well, yeah, I, she looks really good. I mean, she started swimming on Saturday. We, you know, we just, our training days have been primarily field because we have so many different dogs here, right. not just from my, we try to get the field stuff done and we had enough time Saturday to get back to the water. So my friend, you know, the Browns took a bunch of dogs back to the water. I stayed because I had a litter of Mindy's puppies in my front yard. So I just stayed back. Mm -hmm. They took all the dogs and got them all swimming, which was fun, including mine, which was you know, thank you guys. Yeah, well, yeah. It does. So, yeah, hope it does take a village once in a while. It does. It, it really takes a village, almost always, really, to get everything done that we want to do. Yeah, Claire, did you um, did you have you know with with the NA test? <clears throat> excuse me. It's you know field tracking and water. Did you have any spots that you were like, oh boy, or you know? I think Cam's right. I mean, most of the time, dogs don't do a bad job in the field. You know, I mean, they could, no, you know, they could not well, point, Adley, but. Yeah. But Adley kind of went a little crazy, uh -huh. I guess you could say. Um, she, you know, you give her, give her the instruction to go hunt, mop, whatever. And she takes off and uh, like, I felt like she was. I'll, can I tell you what happened? And sure. Then, oh, yeah. Then, let's hear okay. it. Yeah. So off we go. And. You have to keep in mind, I've never done this before. I have no idea what the judges are looking for. And I'm already like anxious and, oh mm. my God, I can't believe this is really happening. It's here, you know? Right, right. So we go out. Um, my judge was Dave Wolf. He was awesome. 
uh, we walked, well, there was obviously other people there too, but he was the one walking beside me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I kept mentioning to him, like, here she goes again, because we, we ended up pointing six times and we came across eight birds in total. <coughs> and uh, wow. the first two birds uh, were in a really bizarre spot. Like we were walking in one particular field and she takes off, her nose goes in the air, she takes off to this marsh and there's all this long reed, like six, seven foot reeds and all you hear is crack, flash, bang, like, and sh sh off in the distance and Dave's like, get your dog back. I'm thinking she's not coming back. <laughs> Double whistle. I couldn't believe it. She comes back, give her some water, hunt him up again. And off she goes right back to the marsh. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is bad. So I said, can we just keep walking? She'll come, she'll come. So she gives up finally comes to the secondary field where some of the birds would supposedly be planted. Right. Right away on the fence line, we get a bird. Points. I go walk up. She flushes the bird. Off it goes. And she's gone. See you later. <laughs> Dave's like, can you get your dog back? And I'm like, oh, no. So she did come back. Then we put her in the pond to swim. There's a little pond on the property. Just to cool, off, the pond. And just to cool off a little bit. Yeah, 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 because it was a very, very hot and, and get, day, And that helps get the dog's mind off of the last thing. Yeah. 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 So head out again. We flush two birds just because they were right next to each other in the grass. She just runs over them. They take off. So um, the way the property is, it almost it's almost like there's three different fields. Um, and so the third field <coughs> is where the birds were literally being planted. So we were about the seventh person to go that day. So there was, I don't know, 40 birds out in the field somewhere. Somewhere, you yeah. You know, most, most of the time you find, you know, three, you know, whatever. Yep. So she just keeps finding birds and, you know, she points the, what was it, the third, the third time, points the bird. I walk up just as like, because she's getting a bit funny about oh you're gonna take my bird for me so she pointed long enough obviously for a good score right i go up bird goes up and she's gone like we can't even see her anymore <laughs> and so i whistle her back and she's got the friggin bird in her mouth i thought oh no so she gives it to me to hand you know i give it to the judge off we go again she points again again the bird flies away she's gone again I'm thinking, oh, Lord, get her back. <laughs> and you don't she's know the, the rules. Back. Like, you're thinking, oh, no, no. no. She's, oh, no. So she's not supposed she to do that. <laughs> no. So she comes back with that bird. I'm like, like, not not harmed or anything. Just, you know, the bird's looking at me thinking, what's going on? This dog's been running around with me in its mouth. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so she comes back again. We send her out again. Doesn't she point another bird? I walk up, flush up the bird bird's gone the dog's gone again like i mean for 60 seconds and i looked at dave and i said oh my god dave does this count for disobedience and he's like well just to you know it just depends how long the dog is gone for i'm thinking you know <clears throat> get her back doesn't she have that bird too i couldn't <laughs> even believe it so the last point she finds another bird after that again i couldn't even believe it i thought every single time she finds this bird it's going to get worse and worse and she's just going to leave right Finally, she gets this bird, flies away, and she's gone for even longer this time. And I looked at Dave and I said, she's going to have that bird. She's going to have that bird. And sure enough, over the hill she comes with that freaking bird in her mouth. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Four birds. That's, Four. That's, uh, you know, and as a judge, I would, I would, I would have loved to have been walking with you because I, I know you'd be like, wait a minute, I, are they even, oh are they allowed to, you know, cause you don't even know if they're allowed to pick them up, right? You're just like, no. they tell you, oh, we're looking for your dog to point. All it's got to do is point. So you're thinking, okay, they don't tell you that chasing's okay. They don't tell you that picking up birds and bringing them back. So you're wondering like, I'm going to get a good score and a terrible obedience thing. And you're, but what you've got is a dog that's so cooperative <clears throat> to be that age and be a natural retriever. And mm -hmm. bring you the bird. I mean, that speaks volumes to cooperation. That it is, does. that is really, that dog loves you. And, and, uh -huh. and, and well, and also, you know, that's genetic, but you, you can't get the love without the genetic. But you could also, in your lack of knowledge, you could have trained it to where a dog's like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to stay out there and pluck it or, you know, flip it up. I've seen puppies flip it up in the air. 
you know, oh, Cam, how, what's the longest keep away cam you've ever seen with a puppy and a, and a bird? <laughs> Oh, I had it with my with the dog, the one that did the duck search. Well, yeah, but I mean, I thought maybe there was one longer than that. No. Oh no, it was no. That was the worst one. That was that was really bad that day. I mean, he was. I mean, he found I don't know how many birds, and then the last one he pointed. You guys said just let him take it into the parking lot, and he's walking around the parking lot with a bird trying to get in my truck. So yeah, that, that was a big cam fail. Cam should have done a wee bit more obedience with that lad before we showed up, but. You know, he was born in December. We, I, I had one shot to run him. It was in August, and I did, and yeah. I paid for it. But, I mean, like I said, he was a high price, too. I'll take it. Uh, oh. You know, the cooperation court took a big hit. But, yeah, well, that was bad. Run. So he was parading and going around and showing the judges the birds. And, yeah. I'll be, uh, I'm sure Cam's probably already talked to Claire. It's just that I hadn't. And when you see a dog, when I see a dog bringing back birds, in, I don't even care if the bird's alive. The bird could have been dead when they found it. Or some dogs are just that soft mouth, and those chuckers land. They can't get a second flight up, or if they do, the dog saw the second flight, and we don't see it. But then they bring it back, and it's now you also have a dog that's not just cooperative. He's also soft mouthed. I mean, Cam's probably thinking, hmm, when, how old, when are you going to get the dog x rayed? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's some good qualities. I w- wouldn't you agree, yeah, Cam? That's, that's- <clears throat> Natural retriever, oh yes, love that. Yeah, I mean, I think the wine certainly falls in the category of natural retriever, right? But yeah. Uh, yeah. it could also be, you know, not that. That was like picture perfect. You know, that was you, you just couldn't ask for more. But you didn't have any idea, Claire, if that no, was the right I thing didn't. to do. I just thought, well, at least she's bringing them back and not running away. You know. <laughs> so now I would think uh we do i do want to keep talking it, I, we forgot to say you got your dog from give, give your breeder a shout out here we i wanted to make sure ah, they heard that waypoint weimariners spread staub and sue ruger and okay. they are in glencoe ontario okay um yeah. and, I, and i'm sure they're going to be wanting to see your dog again <laughs> where your friends oh, your yes. friends with them now but i mean um so to go over to the, the a dog in a field like that that's got that that ability, and I, you know, that's a that's partly marking and a lot of desire. It's like I, I it's um, always amazes me that a dog can come back from a woodlot not knowing where that bird found and find that bird. Now, granted, it's yeah. not a wild pheasant, and you're not going to catch them. But <clears throat> then to go to the tracking field and ask for a different gear, you know, how how did yeah. how did the tracking go? It was good. It was good. She put her nose down. She stayed on it. And then she kind of did a little bit of a figure eight because she was coming back to see, like, getting the old new scent. Mm-hmm. Um, but she definitely had the, the forward. Progress. Uh, I don't even know how to forward, explain pro- it. Yeah. Forward progress. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they didn't, the judges didn't say anything otherwise than that. So, because I did ask Dave at the end of the day if there was anything that he felt that uh, handler or dog that I could improve on because he was walking with me and saw how everything went. Um, and he just told me obedience. Yeah. So, well, I mean, every, every, yeah. every child needs some obedience, you know, including, they certainly do. <laughs> including, if, in fact, if you don't give them a little obedience, they will be in charge and, and you, uh, oh, yes. you regret that. Yeah. Um, and yes. then water, how did the water go that day? Perfect. Just perfect. Now, yeah. being being up in Canada, you you suffer like we do. You know, a lot of hard water, frozen water from November to yeah. When did your water come out? Probably April, maybe May. Uh, yes, I made absolutely sure last year because she was born June third. Mm-hmm. So I brought her home July twenty eighth, and I started exposing her to water immediately. Oh, good, good. Yeah, so the day after I got her, we actually went down to the beach and walked along. The waves were not super scary. It was just enough that, you know, it wouldn't traumatize her, but, right. you know, she'd be fine walking. And um, there's actually a bit of an inlet um, that the lake runs into, so I actually take her regularly to do water work there. All I'll right. probably do that this afternoon. I have her sister, Zika, right now, too, so how, well, we're going to have some fun. How did you end up with her sister? Did you, did, um, did you start your own cult? Too. <laughs> did you st- <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm going to keep sibling sisters and lose my mind. No, um, we we actually took Zika for three weeks in October when um, Fred and Sue went moose hunting. And we just love her so much. So um, I wasn't allowed to have her before natural ability. 
So I said, after natural ability, I'm stealing your dog. We're having a vacation. <laughs> so that's what I did. Oh, Fred's like, you want to steal her? I said, you said I could have her after natural ability. And Sue just looked at him and said, yeah, yeah, you kind of did. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So we've, we've been having a fun little doggy vacation for the last couple of weeks, but we're going to have to get some more training in here for Water Dog Junior. So she's going to be going back home in a couple of days, but. It's been really fun having her here. That's cool. Now, being a, yeah. a, a taxidermist, too, tilt your screen so people can see your room a little bit. Um, oh. This is, are you, a, are you a taxidermist more than a farrier or a farrier more than a taxidermist or, or what? Um, I would say probably, it's, it's probably 50-50 now. Um, I, I've, been fair, I've been a farrier, pardon me, for 15 years now. And um, that... You know, it's a really hard job. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm not trying to pull the girl card here. Right. But we're really not meant to be doing things like that. So, you know, I had to kind of start declining my clients a little bit because um, physically it was hurting me. Yeah, that job um, will beat you up. I mean, it's just a, yes. it's a tough so, job. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I started doing taxidermy just as a hobby. And... Um, to be honest with you, so many people kept asking me to do deer heads and I'm like, I'm going to have to start uh, charging, you You know, this is, <laughs> this is a business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, charge them for, for the material costs and stuff. And you know, your friends are like, Oh, Claire, can you do a deer head for me? And then they tell their friends and you're like, well, I guess I'm going to open a business now, which <laughs> I did in 2019. And, uh, I've had to move my studio three times because of, uh, size renting things so now like my wonderful boyfriend rob actually did all of this woodworking up here for me nice. there's a nice beautiful floor yes he did an amazing job very lucky so um so i don't plan on moving from this beautiful place so anytime anybody's down in uh southwestern ontario Come check well, out the studio. I'll, I'll, I'll get out there sometime. I, and I, I think yes. you, I You're think coming you for a hunt with us, Ron, I, with our wine mariners. That's right. <laughs> and I'm bringing another rare breed. I'm going to bring a wire haired Vishla with me just, just to keep oh, things interesting goodness. because they I actually <laughs> met somebody that went to that uh, clinic at Navda. Oh, really? Uh, I can't remember the lady's name from Hungary, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Zofie. he was saying that he met you and I'm like, Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> Well, I think you missed an opportunity as a taxidermist, and I'll tell you what it was. Oh, no. If, if my dog would have brought back three healthy, plump chuckers, you should have done a dead hanging tax. You should have had the judges give you the birds after the test, say, I want my birds yep. back, and then mounted them all hanging, like from a leather string, like the old school yep. dead mount, and then yep. you could have put the dog's plaque above that. See? Oh. You just, you just, Run. I know. I just, I, I'm, I'm very creative in my thinking. I'm very creative. Well, uh, the next bird. Next, we'll step the, the utility test for the utility yeah. test. Yes. Anything you, they bring yes. back shot, just say, I know you guys are going to want to carry it in your pouch. That's fine. But I want those yeah. birds that you shot over my dog. And then you can do the, and don't do a chucker standing up. They're, they're not that pretty of a bird. Boring. Boring. Yeah. They are pretty birds, though. Interesting. They are. they are pretty, but I don't know. I mean, unless you hunt them, I don't know. They're, they're so incredibly stupid that they bother me sometimes. And I know that's not what the wild chucker is like, but, you know, right. they, they can be one and of my the... Drive. They can, <laughs> Cam, are you seeing chucker every day now? <laughs> well, because they have the training day. Right. And so then they're just walking around like... Durr, durr. Running up and down the driveway, driving everybody crazy. Yeah. All um, the dogs. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Well, listen, ladies, I will. Uh, I won't keep you guys real long. If did we miss anything out here? I mean, we got a good synopsis of this. Is <clears throat> I just thought it was a when when Claire wrote me or sent me a message on Instagram, and in knowing the breed and being a nav to judge myself back in the day, you know, and and, and kind of going <clears throat> for you know with the Broncos, it's it's an underdog, right? And mm -hmm. Cam would agree, I'm sure that you know historically you weren't gonna turn a lot of people into Weimaraner fans, right? Um, right. And then her story sounded so like, oh, my God, here's a person, first dog, first natural ability test. Everything's going good. Cam's seen yeah. this before. I just thought it was a great tie-in to, uh, I mean, to a, a, really, a really great breed that doesn't get all the props that it, 
it, it's kind of like, you know, like how bad, like whatever you want to call bad people, criminals. Like, it's kind of like if, if something becomes like, a, like, oh, you know, oh, you know what Bell's people from that town are like. Yeah. And it's almost like nobody wants to take the chance on it, you know. And, you know, yeah. Claire kind of did it by accident. And Camille's been, you know, pounding the pavement on it for, I won't say how long, but a long time, Cam. Cam. Because you, you and I are of similar, similar uh, birth, birth decades. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, so did I miss anything? Is, is everything good? We got our, we got our yeah. p- plugs in for everybody. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, and then, Cam, if you have that, uh, that trainer come over next spring, I will, you give me the dates early, and I will not go. To, I don't have an Alaska trip planned, but I won't make okay. another trip plan. I will, I will be there. I will keep posted on that. I hope she. I I know she's coming back in the fall. Uh, if she comes back in the spring, I'll definitely make sure you know about her. She's a really neat lady. Very very knowledgeable. Well, you know me. I'm always looking for another interview, and I love, uh, especially like like when I interviewed Sophie. Uh, some of the things she did, I I couldn't express it in the interview I did, as much as in my head. It was like, she was having my dog sit, and she was laying three bumpers down a trail for it. I'm like, my dog's not force broke yet. And she says, this dog retrieves, this dog retrieves, you send, send, send the dog. You know, and boom, picked up a bumper, came back, gave it to me, boom, picked up another bumper. I'm like, I would have never tried doing that with a dog at that age, right? And there's something that, there's just something to learn from everything out there. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, when she, when she shows up again, I would, I would love to meet her and love to see it. Absolutely. Be fun. All right. Well, listen. Everybody, get on with their uh, the rest of their Monday. And Claire, I appreciate you for coming on. And Cam for being Thank a f- you. Cam for being a friend for many years. I will uh, I will get up there at some point, whether it's a test or not. In fact, um, okay. I was supposed to be up your way. Um, I think is Jeff Ebert's the test secretary, isn't he up in Northern? That's North Michigan. Yeah, the Michigan chapter. Yeah, uh, Michigan's our Wendy. Yeah. yeah. And Wendy, Wendy said we had a full full waiting list, <clears throat> and I got a hold of Jeff, and uh, I sent him. I, I filled out the form. I sent him a text picture of it. I said, "Hold me." He said he had opening, and he said, "I said, hold me the spot. Hold me the spot." And he says, "Okay, send a check to the secretary." I said, "Okay." I said, "But I'm taking off. I'm going to be in Alaska, and then I ended up going to Virginia." And my wife, God bless her, I left the envelope there with the application, and on the inside of the Fold of the envelope. I said, "Send check for 162." She just clicked the envelope, closed it, and sent it to him with no check. So, oh. I am I'm in this process this morning and all day trying to find another test for me and Tagus. But uh, oh boy, yeah, I, I, I've got a couple. In fact, hopefully by the time this is over, I'll check my emails and I'll have a. a it's it's going to be tough this year, but. Um, then, then you guys, then you can interview me about my, uh, my rare, my rare breed NA oh, day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I'll let you guys go. And I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing your stories and your, uh, and the, the breed of your loves, the yes. love of your breeds. Take care, thank Ron. You. Thanks, yep. Cam. Bye, Claire. Bye. Bye-bye. Stop. The recording has stopped. There we go. <clears throat> that was good. Did you still there, Claire? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think she's gone. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's, think it's a great story, and I and it is. It really is a nav story, and I you know I d- yeah. w- didn't want to, um, you know I, I I'm not anti AKC or CKC. I don't know hardly w- really about it, but it, that story seems to only repeat. I think in in the nav world. You know, more I, so than the AKC world. Maybe it's because you got to go so many times and you're just there for a shorter day or, or what it is. But, you know, and maybe it right. does happen in the AKC on occasion. I don't know. Mm, it's more of a commitment. I mean, you got to do the, you know, what, five legs of master and four legs of senior if you've done junior. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I did it for years. And I just don't, you don't see as many hunters in the AKC side of the house as you do NABDA. You just don't. Yeah, and we're so, even, and we're losing the hunters with NAVDA, so it's even it's even less. AKC is just more about the title then, and not the hunting so I, much. You see, it, it, again, this is not to diss the show crowd, right? But you see a lot of the show crowd. That's where they get their their fi- field bred is from those AKC hunt tests. Mm. 
So they they're literally just doing that, and you know, and that's fine. Obviously, if a dog can you yeah. know get a high level of AKC or NAB, the dog's got what it takes, and then it's just a right. matter of if the people hunt or not. But you know, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. Anyway, all right. What's uh, what's the rest of the? You, you're going training this afternoon, huh? Duck yeah, search. I want, we, yeah, my the bitch that I'm running you. Ut- 